Have we got the audacity to do this? We need to disappear for a while. They are the students who hoaxed Fleet Street. They hoaxed the hacks. Our art piece became the biggest hoax of 1998. We deliberately set out to manipulate the media in some way. It went from just being a sort of small, angry story to going all over the world. Yorkshire News. CNN. Sky News. Daily Mail. The Daily Telegraph. It was like fake news before fake news. There are famous hoaxes in history, and I don't think it's exaggerating to say that Leeds 13 will have a place in that. My name is Sarah, I'm an artist and I'm one of the Leeds 13. My name is Matthew, I was an art student and one of the Leeds 13. The press actually gave us our name. We were all studying fine art at the University of Leeds. We all studied together, lots of us lived together, we all socialised together. Project Going Places began in the third year of the degree course. We were all thinking about what we should really be doing for our third year show. And we decided that we'd do something collectively as a team. We wanted to get back down to sort of the grassroots of what art could be and how far you could push it. We could see what a massive hold the media have on the population and we thought we'd see where we could go with it. What about fundraising? Got anything? We've started very slow with the art society and stuff like that. To really make this work, there was a number of sort of things that we had to do. The plan was we were going to fake a holiday. It was going to look like we'd been to Malaga. We had flight tickets that we faked. We basically scanned in plane tickets and altered them on Photoshop. We had locations that we went to shoot on to create our holiday snaps you'd have seen what looked like a picture of young people enjoying themselves on the beach. But the reality is that we were in a, you know, Scarborough beach, north of England, freezing cold, still in winter. So we put a, a blue filter on the camera and we hired a sunbed and we, we put it into one of the cellars. A really nice pool, sort of lounging about near the hotel. The pool was in Chapel Allerton, Leeds, a private property. You kind of had to fish the scum out of the water before we got in it. And we also, maybe the biggest coup was kind of getting the airport, Leeds Bradford Airport at the time, to let us back through arrivals, which is a crazy thing to have done. We wanted our uh, people who came to the show to come and meet us at the airport and see us get off that plane. In fact, the airport were kind enough to put the flight up on their screens and out we came along with some extras who'd come along to help. The Leeds student newspaper got involved because this was a topic of conversation across campus. Leeds student, con artist, Spanish ripoff. The newspapers thought that we'd taken over a thousand pounds of grant money and gone on holidays. Furious officials are demanding that artists who splashed out over a thousand pounds of union money on a Spanish holiday must repay the cash immediately. The band did arrange an exhibition in Leeds Art Gallery last week, but stunned guests arrived to find an empty studio. They're totally taking the piss. Con artist Spanish ripoff, Art Grant funds holiday in Sun. They went with a particularly lovely photograph of two of the members sitting on the beach. It just went crazy. Sunday Mirror, Yorkshire Evening Post, Yorkshire Post, The Daily Telegraph, The Express, The Sport, The Guardian, Times. Piss artists. A group of students got a £1,000 grant to do something artistic, so they became piss artists on a massive holiday binge. I think we were particularly proud of that, <laughs> that title. We were feeling smug around the fact that we pulled this thing off, but at the same time we were feeling sick the whole time this happened because it was re a really intense moment and we were terrified that we were going to get found out any minute. A viewer may have said, you know, this is very typical of art students. You know, they're lazy, they waste taxpayers' money. People like the union have spent, as I understand it, a long, long time trying to raise money for a coach for the disabled. They hand this money to you, they, won't, they don't see that this is anything to do with art. OK, first of all, I'd like to say we inevitably have been selfish, and I don't deny that, but sometimes you have to push to get the exposure. Interrogated on camera <laughs> to, uh, you know, and, and still keeping up the pretense of the fact that we'd been, but little did they know. My name is Martin Wainwright, and I was writing for The Guardian in the north of England at the time of the Leeds 13 affair. And it was all over the papers 
uh, that these students had gone off and had a binge at public expense. I remember thinking, this does sound a bit fishy. You know, it's so blatant. Back in the 90s, the way the media operated was very narrow. The tabloid newspapers had an enormous power because they had, they had very, very big circulations, you know, three, four million. And the country took its agenda from a much uh, narrower range of options. It could be quite a frightening concentration of media power. It stemmed from local newspapers picking things up first. Even micro newspapers like parish magazines or student union newspapers in this case. That made it a bit easier for people plotting to <laughs> upset these channels. <laughs> We were really aware in our minds of when we wanted to break the real story, which is that we hadn't gone on holiday, we hadn't spent the taxpayers' money. One of us went on the Today programme and broke the news live on air. John Crossley, it might have been cheeky and funny and everything, but it wasn't really art, was it? Well, in the light of all the media hype and everything that's happened, we want to introduce the possibility that it was all a simulation and that the money was a complete non-issue because, in fact, we didn't spend it. And for us, the reality of the whole event was the way it's been perceived by everyone else and not the actual holiday because it didn't actually happen. The reaction kind of stunned silence on the radio programme was a bit like, so you're telling me you didn't go? I mean, the, the tension on that in, in that interview, the confusion, it, I mean, it was great. Um, and, and actually a huge relief because we now could tell the truth. After we broke the news, things just erupted. <laughs> Story number two swung into operation, which was much better than story number one, you've been had. Once it was obvious that this was a hoax, um, there was a lot of coverage because the, the mechanics of the hoax were so clever. The phone didn't stop ringing. We woke up to a sort of barrage of TV crews on our doorstep, you know, outside our student house in Leeds. News teams from all over descended on one of the houses we lived in and were falling over each other to, to get the story. This house, they say, which they'd only leave in disguise. Papers that ran with it were really annoyed and angry that they'd been duped. Wanted to interview the crazy students that had done this thing and hoodwink the media. It's about exposing the difficulties of authority, really, and mm. saying who is and who isn't, and who has the authority to say this is art. So is me being here and interviewing you part of the project as well? It's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Max Clifford, we actually kind of probably hit the nail on the head. I think the whole thing's hysterical, because of course it, uh, it shows the media up in a, in a light, shall we say, that uh, it's going to cause an awful lot of embarrassment to an awful lot of journalists. The whole uh, lecture that's given to us by certain papers that uh, hold themselves up as being uh, um, wonderfully informative and always right is total nonsense mm. from the start. The Channel 4 um, news that came out was one that we were really pleased with actually because they properly engaged with the ideas that we were discussing um, at the time and rather than just sort of saying we were uh, irresponsible. When a group of art students from Leeds University made a degree exhibition out of themselves apparently conceptualising on the Costa del Sol, the newspapers duly knee-jerked into action. But I think they're making a very serious point which is that the press have a pretty childish attitude towards reporting art. Uh, Cosmo Landisman. It's not great art. I don't think it goes anywhere. I don't think it generates great debate. I think he completely missed it. But you know, as those things go, it wasn't immoral in a way. They, they tried to be original within a small, limited way. They hadn't properly looked into the story and they'd run with it without doing the research. But after their story had been swallowed hook, line and sinker by Fleet Street. The Yorkshire art students that conned Fleet Street. Yeah, that's uh... That was, that's a good title. Yeah, I agree with that. We started having interest from sort of other non-news shows as well. The Big Breakfast saying, well, send up a car. Big Breakfast, all those kind of shows that uh, were really loving this idea. They were finding the whole hoax thing really, you know, a lot of fun. Please welcome Hannah Foote, Sarah Thornton and Chris Hersey from the Fine Arts course at Leeds University. Ladies. Yeah! Uh, the, the, the twist in the story was, you know, that we actually didn't spend all the money. We think the British have got a great sense of humour and we thought they'd appreciate it. OK, so where did you take all the photographs then? Because there's lots of photos of you frolicking in the Costel Sol that outraged Middle England. That's actually in Leeds, isn't it? Yeah, that's in Leeds. <laughs> <laughs> and also, there were, there were supposed to be 13 of them, but all the pictures show 11. I don't know who the other two are. One would be taking the picture. <laughs> 
to have Jermaine Greer support you on, you know, a show like Have I Got News For You was great. The highlight of the media moment. I had a real high from it, you know, it was, it was really exciting. The original story and the true story were both extremely entertaining. All journalists would bite at that story. The two things it exposed about the media were the speed with which the media works. And the media should be more honest about that and put their hands up more often in the past and said, actually, we got this wrong. We were in a rush. You shouldn't believe everything you see, read, or are told. 